What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at and install Kivi 2.0. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at and install Kivi 2.0. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Friday morning here in Vegas. Very excited about the weekend. Man, it's been a long week. I am ready for the weekend. And in this video, we are looking at Kivi 2.0. Now this was released just a couple of days ago, two days ago, it looks like. And this is very exciting. So up until now, we've been using Kivi version 1.1.1, which had certain limitations. As a lot of you know, you couldn't use it unless you had Python 3.7 or below, which a lot of people don't have because right now Python is on version 3.9 and it just wouldn't work with Kivi. And there were some other, you know, little issues as well but they finally come out with 2.0 and it looks great. It works great. Works with, uh, we can see right here, it works with Python versions 3.6 to 3.9. They have dropped release for Python 2.7. So if you're still using Python 2.7, this won't work. I have no earthly idea why you would be using Python 2.7, but I, I think 2.7 comes with Mac. So if you're using a Mac with the default Python, that's still 2.7. So you should have updated your Python anyway, but I know a lot of people just don't do that. But Anyway, Kivi 2.0, very, very excited about this. And uh, the guys did a great job with this, as far as I could tell so far. So in this video, we're gonna install it really quickly. And that's one of the nice things. You can install this very quickly. Installing the old Kivi was uh, you know, a little bit of a thing. This is just easy. It just works and it's fantastic. Like I said, they did a great job with this. So I am at github.com forward slash Kivi forward slash Kivi forward slash releases if you wanna come here and read through this at all, or you can go straight to the Kivi website. So if you go to the Kivi website, kivi.org, and you click on install, you can see the different installation options for all of the things. I'm just on Windows, so we're in this video, we're just gonna do Windows installation. So we can come through here and we can just do it from here, or you can click on here and follow the instructions here. Uh, these instructions are a little more convoluted, uh, uh, you know, they want you to install a virtual environment and all that stuff. We're going to do that, but we don't need instructions for it. I'm just going to walk you through it. So I'm just going to go off of this. So the great thing, I'll just cut to the chase to install this thing. All you have to do is pop this into your terminal and that's it. And that's all there is to it. It's fantastic. I, I'm really happy about this. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm pretty excited. So uh, let's walk through this step by step because we don't want to just install this. We want to set up a virtual environment as we always do. You always want to install things like this in a virtual environment based on your project. So per project, every project you create, you should create a virtual environment and you should install all these things into just that virtual environment. Why? Because if you have different projects, they have different dependencies. You know, we might have done something with the old Kivi and we need the old Kivi in there. So we would put the old Kivi in that virtual environment. Obviously here we want to use the new Kivi, so we're going to put the new Kivi in our virtual environment. But to do that, you need a virtual environment. So I've got the Git Bash terminal as always. I just open it. This is the default uh, thing. It's I'm in C users Codemy. Codemy is the name of my computer. It's my logged in username. So whatever your logged in username is, you'll see it right there. So the first thing we want to do is create a directory to hold all of our Kivi stuff. So I'm going to go MKDIR and I want to put this in the C drive and I'm just going to call this Kivi new, right? In past videos, we've been doing Kivi GUI. Now we're gonna be doing Kivi new. So now we need to move into that directory, CD, change directory. So let's go C slash Kivi new. And we can LS, there's nothing at all in here. And we're good to go. So let's install now our virtual environment. And to do this, we type, in, we type Python dash M and we wanna start a virtual environment, V-E-N-V. -E and I'm gonna call this vert, short for virtual, right? So give this a second to spin up. And I don't know if I mentioned or not, I'm using Python version 3.9. We can type Python dash capital V to see, yes, in fact, we're using Python 3.9. Like I said, this requires Python 3.6 to 3.9, I guess. Uh, so says the documentation right here. It's the first release, hence blah, blah, blah. Currently supported Python versions are 3.6 to 3.9. So if you're using something below 3.6, you're probably gonna wanna use the old version of Kivi. I have videos on that in this playlist. The very first video, I think we installed the old version of Kivi, so you can check that out. There should be a link in the comment section below to the playlist for this Kivi playlist. So back over here, we've installed our virtual environment. Now we need to turn it on. So 
let me just clear the screen. And to do that, we type in source and then vert and then scripts and then activate, right? And when we do, we see now we've got this vert thing above our prompt. That means the virtual environment has been turned on. So, okay, let's pit freeze to see what's been installed in our virtual environment. And we can see nothing has been installed, which is what we would expect. This is a brand new virtual environment. There's nothing installed into it. So now let's go ahead and install the new version of Kivi. So you have several options here. You can install just the Kivi base with the Kivi examples. You can install the Kivi base and the media dependencies and the examples, or you can get everything and the examples. We're just gonna get everything. Now, I don't need the examples, so I probably won't install those, but we just copy this line, head over here, right click and paste this guy in. It's just pip install Kivi bracket full. Now, like I said, I don't need the examples, so I'm gonna take those off. Those are optional. You can install them or not install them. I don't wanna install them because I don't need to see the examples. Uh, so let's just hit enter. Now. I don't know if this is because this is brand new and lots of people are installing this, or if this is just a function of the installation, but it takes a while for this to install. And it looks like nothing's happening. You can see right here, our cursor's just blinking. And this has happened earlier when I installed it earlier, same thing. Uh, it could be my internet connection, but I don't think so. I think this is just, I don't know, maybe a lot of people are installing this because it's brand new, just came out, or whatever, I don't know. Maybe it just takes a while, but your cursor will sit and blink here for like a good minute or two as if nothing is happening. So be patient. It is working. Don't freak out. Don't hit enter a bunch of times or control C or control Q to try and break out of here. Just let it blink. Let it, it do its thing and uh, it should work. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and as soon as it starts moving again, we'll pick it back up. Okay, so boom, like 10 seconds later, it started going and uh, it's doing some stuff. And uh, it's, it looks very busy, right? And it, even when it starts to go like it just did, it could still take a, a minute or two to finish installing. So uh, it should be fine. Don't freak out or anything. Just sort of uh, be patient, let it do its thing. Now, even if it takes like five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, which I guess it could be possible, don't freak out. Just, you know, go drink some coffee or something. Come back in a few minutes and it should be done. And boom, it's done. So. Now let's go ahead and clear the screen. Now let's hit freeze to see what we got here. And we can see, man, a whole bunch of stuff was installed. So I think it takes a while to start because the files are quite large. I think it's a couple hundred megabytes for the full version at least. So it's probably downloading stuff. That's why it's blinking like that. So based on your internet connection, it could be fast or slow. It just takes a while to download everything. So we've got requests, we've got some Python stuff, we've got Kivi, Garden, Kivi 2.0, all kinds of other cool things. So very, very cool. And that's it. Done. Donezo. That's it. <laughs> right? This is fantastic. And this has been sort of a, a sore spot for a lot of people with Kivi it is it's just tricky to install. But the guys over there at Kivi.org did a fantastic job with this. It just works. So I'm going to pull up a quick, let's see, file explorer. And you can see my C drive is getting very full. So let's have it over to our Kivi GUI directory that we've been working on in these past videos. And I'm just gonna grab our calculator app that we've been working on, calc.kb and calc.py. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's just come over to our Kivi new directory. And I'm just gonna paste these in, All right? So just to see if this worked right. So we can run this like always, Python calc.py. And when we do, boom, boom, it does the things and it pops right up. Eight times nine equals 72.0 minus three, All right? And it works. So fantastic, super excited about this. I haven't really dug into all of the things to see, you know, there's some release notes with uh, things that have changed. There's the change log and, uh, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. I really haven't spent a lot of time digging through all these things and playing with this. I'm just happy to see it out and uh, excited to tell you guys about it. But very, very cool. So uh, play around with this. Install the new version if you like. If you got the old version, you probably still want to update. I don't know that you absolutely have to right away, but you might as well, right? So go ahead and do that. Uh, read, read through some of these release notes if you're interested. If you are not on Windows, obviously, you could come over here and, you know, uh, if you want to install on Mac, you just click this read through here. Again, it's saying to do a virtual environment. 
And then it's the same thing, python-m, or you can a lot of times leave that off and just go pip install kivi base, or in our case, we did kivi full. Same command, right? And really that's all there is to it. So super awesome, super easy. For Linux, we can come through here and let's see, it looks like the same thing, right? So man, they've just did a fantastic job. I keep saying this over and over, but uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. It's Friday too, so hey, you know, <laughs> it's a fun Friday surprise for us. I guess this came out two days ago, but today we're looking at it. So, all right. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.